Hello everyone, welcome to Jargus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the 13th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Tuba Triumph. Now this was a really good Ravi episode. It starts off in the park, the rangers are passing the ball to each other, except for Ravi. He's sitting on a bench and drawing in a sketchbook. And he's actually drawing the kid a little ways over in front of him on a different bench, who's playing a tuba. And Zoe comes over and asks him to join in, but he quickly hides a sketchbook and pretends that he is studying a grid battle force uh, security manual. Something along those lines. Some sort of manual for grid battle force. So that's his excuse not to do it. Apparently, he's sort of embarrassed about it. And then he notices that a group of bullies comes up to the kid and dumps soda inside his tuba, then making fun of him. That's not just bullying, that's property damage. Oh, and the leader of this trio of miscreants, and the only one who actually talks, the same actor that did Young Aiden from Ninja Steel. Perhaps this is really just the early days of Levi Weston. <laughs> anyway, Robbie sees a boy whose name is Joey just dump the whole tuba in a trash can. Now this kid can't be any older than 10 years old, so most likely his parents paid for that tuba. I'm sure they'll be pretty mad if they find out he just threw it in the garbage. So Ravi talks to him, tells him he shouldn't feel bad about playing the tuba or let the boys get to him. And that his grandpa used to be in a jazz band playing the tuba. And he was pretty cool. And then Joey recognizes him as teaching class at the Riptide Gym. So Ravi invites him to come take his uh, martial arts class one day. And as soon as the kid is away and Ravi goes back to his bench, Roxy just grabs the tuba and makes a Robotron out of it. Tubatron. So it causes ruckus in the park. She puts a data chip on him. Wanting to get uh, Devin's cheetah speed, but they cannot do anything. The Rangers are outclassing them. Mainly because Tubertron is just so slow and bulky, he's just a liability without a whole lot of attack power. So those two retreat, and Scrazzle decides to upgrade Tubertron to have a much more powerful blast from his horn, which is tested out on Blaze, who gets sent flying through a wall. So yeah, that's quite some sound there. Now, to help prepare for the next attack, Nate is upgrading the Giga Drone detectors from the previous episode to detect tuba sounds. Meanwhile, Robbie is on his own at the gym when Joey shows up asking for a little one-on-one -on -one lesson, to which Ravi happily agrees to. But Joey seems to be a little bit alpha blood because he says when we're finished, no one's going to be wanting to mess with me ever again. So before they start, Ravi calms them down, saying that martial arts aren't for doing that, that it help protect people. You know, a scene like this sounds quite familiar. Hey! Geek! <laughs> Teach us how to beat people up. Yeah! <laughs> martial arts was not developed to hurt others. Anyway, he's helping Joey train, showing him all sorts of different poses and exercises. We get a nice little montage of that. Joey seems to really pick it up really well. Plus, he seems to really enjoy himself. Though there's one move, a bit of an advanced move, that Ravi tries to teach him, the tornado kick, that he can't just get right. He just keeps falling over it every time and getting frustrated. It's a pretty advanced move for someone's first class, and if they are getting the hang of it pretty quickly. I wonder if Joey's actor actually does know some karate or some sort of martial arts experience before getting cast in this role. So in some cooling off time, Ravi tries to tell him to do something to calm down and make himself happy before trying again. And he said his tuba used to make him happy, but he don't have that anymore. Because you threw it in the trash instead of making them pay in court for your repair fees. But in all seriousness, they do take a break. And it's not long until we see Ravi in Grid Battle Force with a bunch of old brass instruments, including a tuba. You know, the ones that belong to his grandfather. And Ben and Betty see a trumpet and a saxophone, and they decide uh, they want to try him out, and Ravi says, go ahead, knock yourself out. Of course, they're full of dust, and the only one he's really polished off is the tuba. Now, Commander Shaw sees this and asks what he's up to, and she says that a ranger needs to always be prepared and not get mired down in some silly distractions like some instruments and making music. And this is her father she's talking about. So I wonder if there's some animosity between her and her father. Or maybe she just sees that as something entirely uh, superfluous when there's a Robotron that can attack at any moment. Either way, she does seem to look down on playing instruments. Even though, from what we're told, it was basically her father's career. So who knows, maybe we'll get to learn a little more about Commander Shaw personally in a future episode. 
That would be interesting to see. But anyway, she gets to go ahead for Bobby to give it away to Joey. While he's on the way, Ben and Betty are using a soap and a vacuum to really try and clean out the instrument. And what happens is, it just creates a burst of fluid soap liquid all over the place. And it sends them flying across the hallway, sliding on the ground, between two different rooms. I like that at the end of the hallway, some other member of Grid Battle Force is walking by. They just turned ahead to look at it, and as soon as Ben and Betty flew by, they just kept on walking. It's like, well, this weird soapy substance appeared out of nowhere. Oh, Ben and Betty, add it up to the usual shenanigans. Move along. <laughs> and this is a military organization, mind you. Ah, ben and Betty are great. They're like Bulk and Skull if they were actually good natured. <laughs> Definitely a lot more entertaining than Victor, Vincent, and Monty. Because of them, it's mainly a Victor's manner of speaking that made him so entertaining. <laughs> Back at the gym, Ravi and Joey are training again, and Joey just cannot get the kick down. However, they take a break at a table, and Ravi says he has a little present for him. He gives him the tuba, at which point his sketchbook falls out and Joey sees it. Uh, and Ravi just tries to blow off as it's nothing special, but Joey's really impressed, especially since Especially since the two that he sees, there's a really detailed sketches of Robbie and Roxy. The real Roxy, not the Avatar clone. And one page falls out and Joey slips into his bag. That must surely come into play later. And Joey's apprehensive about taking it because of what happened before. But Robbie says what it's in karate, martial arts, on life, or playing the tuba. Life's all about standing up for yourself and being true to yourself and being proud of who you are and what you do. So that gives Joey renewed confidence. He goes right back to the same bench he was playing on and plays a tuba. Unfortunately, the Giga Drone sensor is detected and originally and arranges deploy only to see it's just a civilian. No harm there. But shortly after, the new and improved Tubatron attacks. And these are massive blasts that keep the Rangers from getting close, even when they are morphed. So he's definitely a stronger opponent. And Nate says that if only we could make a sound of the same frequency to cancel them out. That would do some damage. Of course, Joey wasn't too far away, so he sees him fighting in that line. So he runs up in between Tupatron and the Rangers, and he just blows into his own tuba, points it right at Tupatron when he's sending another sonic blast at him. And this time, they do cancel each other out and knock the two music makers backwards. The Rangers blast Tupatron, and they break his horn. Yes, I actually do say aim for the horn. As if this was Ash telling Pikachu to shock a ride on. <laughs> now unfortunately, the data chip gets damaged. So even though during the course of the battle, Devin did hit it with the Cheetah Strike, it's useless. So Roxy just orders the Giga Drone to be sent out. And while it's being detected, Nate gets an idea for dealing with the giant size. And he asks uh, Joey to make a recording of his tuba playing for a few seconds. And Ace's master plan is to take it to Grid Battle Force and upload it into... The Blue Ranger Zord. I keep forgetting what it's called, but it's the one that he and Smash drive. Anyway, they play it through the missile launchers turning the speakers at the top of the Zord, and that completely wrecks the Giga Drone's ability to attack. So they go make the regular Beast Tech Mega Zord and destroy it with their finishing move as usual. Pretty nice, and we don't see any consequence in the Cyber Dimension from this failure of Roxy. Now back at the gym, Joey is telling Ravi and his friends because he just barely missed the morphing so he don't know their real identities. Even though as far as I know, they're not really kept a secret right now. It just happens that no one really knows because there's no need to tell anyone. And just as he gets finished, Ben and Betty show up with the instruments that they have not practiced playing at all and start playing them terribly. Except for Ben, he can't do anything. And then our unnamed bully, Aiden, just shows up. <laughs> And he starts mocking those two, even though they're clearly at least twice his age. So he steals the saxophone and tries blowing into it, but nothing comes out. Until the soap bursts out of it and hits his two friends. To which he tosses it back at Ben, and he looks really pissed out, like he's gonna beat him up. But then Joey intervenes, and then Ravi and Devin are really looking worried. But Joey says to leave him alone, and he finally does that tornado kick, and he kicks the kid's hat off his head. And that's enough to scare the three away. And when he's talking to Ravi about it, he has a gift for Ravi. He went and got that sketch of his framed. And he says, you need to follow your own advice and be proud of who you are and what you do. I was then paraphrasing this really badly. Point is, don't be afraid to really show who you are and express yourself. No matter what anyone else says. Which is a good lesson to, to tell anyone. Because I know even adults that, because I know even adults 30 years age yet are having a hard time 
grasping this idea. See, this was a really good episode. Joey was one of the few child actors in Power Rangers that really was... That you could really see as more than just a kid that's on a show. He was his own person, with both his own strengths and flaws. Because most of the time when we see a little kid on Power Rangers, they're just a kid. There's hardly anything special. So that's what made Joey so interesting. Like, he had his own path of growth to follow, and he wasn't just someone that the Rangers help out, or maybe learn a weird lesson from. So I really like this, and it showed that Ravi can be more than just someone who has to follow every rule. He can make his own decisions, as well as be in a mentor position himself someday. So this is a really nicely made episode. Plus makes us wonder, is the data chip completely ruined, or do they still have the first two datas that they got? We don't know, and we're probably not going to find out till later. So I really like this episode. I recommend seeing it. But that tornado kick thing still bothers me. I swear I've seen a scene like that before. Tornado kick. But where? Anyway, this has been Jargus. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next episode. Until then, let the power protect you. It's time for justice we promise.